What is up guys, 70 Savage here. Welcome to the video. And if you are new to the channel, I am converting this 2019 Mercedes Sprinter van into a full-time tiny home. Today we are starting on a very exciting project. It is going to be the upper cabinet inside of the van. So if this kind of stuff interests you, if you like van life, van conversions, and you wanna stay up to date with my van conversion, learn about how to build yourself an awesome camper van in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button underneath the video. All right guys, so going in the van now, the plan that we have for this upper cabinet is it's going to extend the entire length of the van. It's essentially going to be built in three parts. The first part is going to be kind of the length of the bed section here. Um, and that's just gonna be straight up storage. There's gonna be a middle section right here that's fairly small and it's just going to house a microwave. And then there's gonna be a third section that essentially mimics the back section there. It's just gonna be straight up storage in the front portion of the van. So there are only a couple of different materials that we're going to be using to build these cabinets. Uh, the first one is Baltic birch. That is all of the plywood that I have here. I bought it in a quarter inch and three quarter inch, um, as well as these oak one by two boards. Uh, these are going to serve some additional structural rigidity um, that kind of extend the length of the cabinet. They're also gonna be used to drill the holes through that are actually going to attach to the plus nuts in the steel frame of the van. So it's gonna keep it held on there very securely. Um, the reason that I'm using a combination of these two materials is because I want the cabinets to be both light and strong. If you imagine this being uh, attached to the roof of the van, we're gonna have cross sections made out of three quarter inch plywood, and then we're gonna essentially wrap that exoskeleton in quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. So the whole structure is gonna be very light, it's gonna be very strong, and it's gonna be perfect for our needs. All right, so we are going to start with this back storage section first. What I'm aiming for is roughly a 12 inches in height at its shortest height and uh, 12 inches in depth at its shortest depth. I say at its shortest because obviously the roof is a bit curved and the side is a bit curved as well. So that's actually the very first thing that we're gonna do is do a cardboard cutout of the cross section of this cabinet here. For this first section of the cabinet, we're actually gonna need to get back into that corner physically to kind of measure stuff. Thankfully, we designed our bed to be a sliding platform so that I can collapse it and uh, work in there a little bit easier. So if you'd like to know how that sliding bed system was actually made, I made an entire video on it in my channel, so go ahead and check that out. Oh, and there's a video on the butcher block, and there's a video on the bench, and there's a video on the ceiling, and there's a video on the floor, and there's a video on the electrical system, on the solar panels. There's pretty much a video on everything. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut a 15 inch by 15 inch square piece of cardboard here, and we're gonna use this to start templating out the curve in the roof and the top of the wall. So to get the curvature of any given awkward curve in the van, um, you wanna grab yourself a piece of scrap cardboard, a pencil, and your hand. So we'll start with this, uh, so we'll start with this top angle curvature of the roof. What you wanna do is take your square piece of cardboard, get it into the curve as much as you can. So in my case, I kind of just push it up against the wall. And then you wanna take your pinky and you literally just drag your pinky across the roof. And it creates a curve. So once you have your curve here, you wanna go ahead and cut that out with your scissors. And then you put it back up against the wall. You do the same pinky trick. Keep your pinky in the same spot, draw the curve out again. Cut it out again, draw it again, cut it out again. Boom, there you go. Now we have a perfectly matching curvature between the cardboard and the roof. We got the same thing with the vertical panel here. All right, so here we are with hopefully the final cardboard template. Um, I'm gonna review with you guys. This takes quite a bit more time than you would think. Um, I'm on my second hour right now of just templating with this cardboard. So <laughs> don't get too impatient when you're making this stuff. It's really important that it, that it turns out right or else uh, there's gonna be a lot more work in the long run. So now what I'm gonna do is transfer this cardboard template to a quarter inch Baltic birch template. It's important just to get it onto a rigid surface. Okay, so we have the profile template traced out onto the Baltic birch here. Um, these are kind of the rough dimensions. 
at its longest points. We're at almost 15 inches and almost 14 inches. It tapers off, uh, the height tapers off and the width tapers off, but um, that's about where we're at. There we are. We have the quarter inch cut out and it matches the wall perfectly. Um, this just proves that we can now trace this onto our three quarter inch production pieces and they will fit just as well. Boom, shakalaka, there we are. All three of these guys are cut out. Now all we have to do is cut slots for the oak one by twos. Okay, so we obviously haven't cut the oak to the correct length yet, but the idea here is that uh, the oak is going to kind of reinforce the whole cabinet system here, so it kind of acts as like an excess skeleton. So now it's time to go ahead and glue the oak slats into the cutout locations. Here we have the frame of the cabinet um, all kind of set up. It's actually not drilled together or screwed or anything. They're all just like loosely laying in there. So what I'm going to do before I actually put glue in here is go around and screw each one of the slats to the templated out piece. Alright guys, so I was actually just at the hardware store picking up these screws that are going to go onto this frame here. I needed something a little bit bigger than the screws that I already have. Um, and when I was in the wood screw section, my buddy Jim at the hardware store uh, came up and said, Hey, why are you using wood screws? Um, and I said, well, because I'm making something out of wood. And he's like, you should use sheet metal screws. And here's why. Um, he basically explained to me that wood screws are made with a lathe and individually cut and therefore they're not as strong. Uh, they can fracture much easier and actually crack and break, which I've actually had some of my wood screws do. Um, whereas if you get a sheet metal screw, they're made with a couple of dies and they're actually work hardened. Uh, much better for applications where you need big time strength. So I want to shout out Jim because Jim has just been so awesome. Um, he's helped me with so much throughout this entire van build and he's like my go-to buddy at the hardware store. Uh, I also want you guys to all know that you should go find a buddy at your local hardware store that knows what they're talking about. Um, it's just so beneficial. It makes me have something to look forward to every time I go there. Uh, he always teaches me something new. So shout out to you, Jim. See you soon. All right, so all we're actually doing here is using our countersink bit with the same number as the screws that we're using. We're pre-drilling a hole and then we are putting the screw in. That's good enough for now. And this structure will hold temporarily so that we can undo the screws, we can put glue in there, and then we can refasten them for a nice and secure connection. All right, now it is time to hit it with the glue. Now we can simply put our oak slot back on and drill it back into place. Alright guys, so all of the glue has dried, I gave it a few hours, and now we have ourselves this cabinet exoskeleton that is ridiculously sturdy. Not only is it sturdy, but it's also crazy, crazy light, and this is going to be perfect for the first part of the upper cabinet in the van. So we're going to wrap all of the sides with quarter inch Baltic birch, and that's going to allow it to still be really light. Um, but it'll strengthen it up just a little bit more and obviously it'll give closed surfaces to the big gaping holes in all the sides. So now that we have this exoskeleton, uh, before I actually put any of the paneling on, I want to figure out how to mount it to the roof here. So I stuck it up uh, to the roof, just had my brother and I hold it. And I traced out where these uh, cross beams are actually going to come in contact with the roof. And that's where I want to install my plus nut so that I can actually attach it to the roof. A plus nut is essentially something that starts out looking like this. You drill a hole for it to go into. It's not actually going to go into this one. Um, I'll actually drill a hole that's the correct size for it. But uh, you, you put it in the hole and then you essentially crank it down and it, it compresses itself vertically into the hole that you've drilled and creates a really secure connection to the roof um, that you can then screw a 5 16 bolt into. So um, we're going to go ahead and start drilling these holes in the roof now so that we can put the plus nuts in them. First plus nut hole is done. As you can see, it slips right in there perfectly. Now we just gotta tighten it down. I hate drilling holes in the van. I hate drilling holes in the van. I hate drilling holes in the van. I have optimized this build to drill as few possible holes in the van. And every single time I do, I put rust protective in there. It's just, it's the worst feeling ever drilling into the frame of 
a vehicle. All right, so we got our first plus nut installed right here to secure the back of the cabinet. And now we just gotta install these two plus nuts on the top ribs, one more on the side, and we will have a very secure connection for the first section of cabinet here. So now that we have all four plus nuts installed here, we need to figure out where these holes line up on the cabinet itself. So the way that I'm gonna do that um, is actually take some Play-Doh here. So I just placed a layer of Play-Doh underneath relatively the same area where the plus nuts are located. So what I'm gonna do now is push the cabinet up into the plus nut and hopefully the imprint of the plus nut is left in this Play-Doh here. Alrighty, got my little brother to help me here. Yee. So now on both of these pieces of Play-Doh, we can actually see exactly where the plus nut is located after this cabinet is positioned perfectly to the top of the van. So I'm just gonna take my awl here and go right down the center, make an impression in the wood. Just put a little force into that, make sure that the impression stays. And then we can go ahead and peel off the Play-Doh. Never thought I'd have a good use for Play-Doh after the age of five. When I walked into Rite Aid and asked them for Play-Doh, it gave me a very strange look. Especially, you know, rolling up in a van. Not the best, uh, not the best perception to give off. But all in good means, we now have ourselves two perfect locations. You can see the little tiny all hole right there. The little tiny all hole right here. Two perfect locations to drill holes to mount our cabinet to the plus nuts. There we go. The bolts lined up perfectly. The Play-Doh trick did the trick. And uh, we've got this guy aligned flush with both the top and the sides. Obviously I haven't uh, aligned the back nuts here. So I'm gonna do that once um, I get the plywood attached to the back part of the cabinet. So let's go ahead and start wrapping this thing with quarter inch birch. So in order to fasten this quarter inch piece of Baltic birch plywood right here, onto the cabinet exoskeleton that we've made. Um, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna glue the quarter inch Baltic birch down uh, using the same wood glue that we use for the slats. And then we're gonna hit it with our brad nailer here around all of the locations that it comes in contact with the cabinet. So bang, bang, you know, all across these ribs, we're gonna hit it. And uh, between the brad nails and the wood glue, I have a feeling it's gonna leave a very strong piece of work. All right guys, I just finished putting all of the quarter inch panels on this cabinet and it is looking absolutely awesome. It was pretty tough to bend the quarter inch Baltic birch and have it actually match the curvatures here, but it turned out pretty good. I just put a ton of pressure and used a ton of rad nails in some sections. Yeehaw brothers, just got this first cabinet installed here. It is looking and feeling super awesome. Um, have it mounted to the four plus nuts that we just drilled. And with those four mounting points, this is crazy strong. I'm shaking the whole van right now. And uh, it's gonna it's gonna hold up for much more than anything I need it for. Our wire channel is all good. It doesn't pinch any of the wires in there. So I'm gonna put some paneling on that so that it, it's hidden once this thing's fully installed. So the next cabinet that we're gonna do is the middle one right here. It's gonna be the smallest cabinet and it's gonna only house the microwave. So it's gonna be slightly different in that it doesn't have bottom bracing. I actually need that additional height to be able to fit a small microwave in there. But other than that, everything else is gonna be the same. So let's go ahead and get cranking on the microwave cabinet. We got the second cabinet done here for the microwave. Things are lining up pretty well. There's not much gap. I mean, with the curvature in the van, you're always gonna have some slight um, errors. It's almost impossible to get it exact, but um, it's definitely up to my liking. The microwave cabinet is mounted with three plus nuts here. I couldn't get a fourth one onto this rib because uh, there wasn't enough room with this vertical pillar here. So I have one down there, one on the right in the big back metal uh, beam right here, and then one vertical one into the top. And uh, all three of those makes it very, very rigid. It's not going anywhere. So now it is time for the third and final cabinet right here. 
This third one is gonna be built exactly the same way as the first one over there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zip through this and I will show you guys the results. Quick test fit of the exoskeleton here. I'm just holding it up with my hand and it seems to fit pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this guy with the quarter inch Baltic birch and put it up like the other guys. All right guys, so now time for the fun part. We are gonna make the cabinet doors. So the hardware that we're using are these Bloom or Blum, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, B-L-U-M is the brand name. There are a couple of tools that you're gonna need in order to st install these hinges consistently. The first one is a Craig hinge jig. Uh, makes it really easy to have consistent measurements on your doors and um, install your hinges so that they work correctly. But in order to set this jig up, we need to do a couple of things. So first of all, I'm lying the Blum hinge on the top of the cabinet where it's gonna kind of be mounted here. And I measured that this distance between the top of the 35 millimeter socket and the top of where I want the um, door to sit is roughly a quarter inch, but I wanna give it um, only about an eighth, eighth of an inch of room just to be safe so that when I open it, it doesn't scrape up against the ceiling. So what I've done is I've set my hole depth on the door to be three millimeters here, which basically means anytime I um, slide this thing up against the door, and I drill a hole, it's gonna be three millimeters from the top. So that's gonna create a consistent space against the top here where I can install the hinges. Other than that, all you need to do is set the depth of the actual bit um, to be the same depth as the socket that goes into the door here. So I've done that with the stop collar provided in the jig here. It only allows it to go down that far. All right, so pretty simple here. Uh, I drew a line four and a half inches in from each side. Um, and I'm just lining up the center of the jig there so we can simply push the jig against the piece of wood here and drill our hole. We now have ourselves a perfect hinge hole. So now what we're gonna do is actually mount the hinges to the door itself. Uh, we just need to make sure that it's square and we can go ahead and screw it in with the pre-drilled holes. First gonna pre-drill. Uh, the screws that they came with look like this. So I'm just taking a drill bit uh, of the same depth to take out some of the wood to make sure it doesn't crack when I screw in the uh, mounting hardware. All right, now to actually drill the screw in, I always do it with a hand screwdriver uh, just to get a good feel for how tight it actually is instead of just going straight through and ruining the whole door. I will put a link to both this jig and these hinges in the description below. All right, so now all we have to do to attach the mounting bracket to the cabinet itself is place it in here, um, just as if it was going to be attached to the cabinet door. And we'll drill one hole right here, just marking it with the screw. And we will drill the other hole right here. Um, so the way that I marked this out is I knew that I made my marks 4.5 inches from the inside of the cabinet. So I made a center line and then I drew areas where the holes should be uh, in terms of how far from the edge they should be. I just looked down these holes where you can now see the lines through them. It might be tough to see on camera, but I can see two little lines coming through the center of those holes. And then I just mark it with a screw um, to get the depth. So we now drilled our pilot holes. We can now go in here with the manual, manual screwdriver and we're gonna go ahead and screw these guys in. So in order to strengthen the kind of backside of these things, since I only use one by twos and they hang off a bit, I just chopped another section of one by two, added some wood glue to it. I'm going to lift this up, stick this guy under, and then screw the screws back down to essentially work as a clamp. Yeehaw, brothers, all we had to do is click it in at this point, and we have ourselves a cabinet door. These hinges actually are smart enough to just click in place. Uh, they have a quick release system where these guys just pop into place, and then there's a little tiny handle back here where if I pulled it, um, the hinge would come off. So it makes it easy to take your doors on and off, um, but 
This particular door turned out very well. I am super stoked. The building of these cabinets is 100% complete. So we have all three of the cabinets uh, placed via our plus nuts. Um, they're very, very strong, very, very secure. I can shake the whole van with them. Um, the hinges work beautifully and the whole, the whole inside is covered. Uh, there's a channel back there for the wires. Everything worked out fantastic. It is now time to pull these guys down and start the finishing process. All right guys, so we got everything here sanded down nice and smooth, um, all the way up to 220 grit sandpaper and have them laid out here um, to prepare for a couple of things, painting and polyurethane. So we're gonna seal the inside faces and we're gonna paint the external faces. Um, but before that happens, the first thing that we had to do was fill in all of the little brad nail holes with wood putty, essentially. Uh, so essentially I overfilled every single one of the holes on the backs of, or the, the underside of each one of the cabinets that you're actually gonna be able to see. And once this stuff dries, I'm gonna go over it with a sander again and it's gonna be nice and smooth and since we're painting it, we're not actually gonna see any of the putty. First thing that we are gonna do here is put three coats of water-based polyurethane on all of the uh, faces of the cabinet that aren't exterior facing. Um, so I'm gonna put this on the outside as well, like on the portions that are touching the van directly, just so that uh, condensation build up there has more of a chance to dry instead of rotting the wood out. I'm also gonna uh, put polyurethane on all of the interior surfaces of the cabinet. Um, that's just for scratch resistance and, and general finishing uh, because those surfaces are gonna be used quite a bit. All right, we got all of the interior surfaces covered with three coats of water-based polyurethane. Uh, they are looking awesome, they're feeling awesome, feeling very sealed. Uh, and now we are going to apply the primer for our paint. So I just do one coat of this stuff, uh, Zinser 123 primer, pretty cheap, pretty easy. Just gonna roll it on, let's get to it. Now we are on to the fun part, painting. So I use Valspar Optimus, it's a latex-based paint. Um, the color that I use is called Modern Gray. So we're gonna go around and do two coats of paint on top of all of the primed surfaces here. Let's get to it. I just finished both coats of paint. Uh, all the cabinets are looking super awesome. So it is now time for the moment of truth and we are gonna put them back out into the van. A couple of finishing touches here are these gas struts that I'm putting in the cabinet to keep the doors open uh, hands free. They're pretty simple to install. Each one of them comes with its own instructions and um, it essentially just tells you two measurements. It tells you how far from each direction you need to mount it on the door and how far from each direction you need to mount it on the inside of the cabinet. Um, so, super simple. All right, got the handles installed. Pretty straightforward. Now we are on to installing these latching mechanisms here. I use the Southco brand. These ones specifically are five pound latches. I'm gonna use that same Play-Doh trick. Put the Play-Doh up here, get the impression, and uh, use that to find my holes on the door. So this here is the first Play-Doh impression um, of the Southco latch, and it always just blows my mind away how effective the Play-Doh trick is. Bada bing, bada boom. We got ourselves an upper cabinet and it is 100% finished. I'm super stoked with how this thing came out. It looks so good inside of the van. All of the lines came out really nicely. The seams are perfect, definitely within the specifications that I would determine to be satisfactory. Um, so a couple of the features here, we have the locking mechanisms, we have the gas struts that hold the cabinets open. The middle cabinet here is our microwave cabinet. I found a microwave that perfectly fits in this cabinet that I made. And then these back two cabinets are also held open via the gas struts and they have the Southco locking latches on there. So super stoked. So if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in more van life content, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down beneath the channel. Also, if you like the video, hit that like button um, and leave a comment. Love hearing your guys' feedback, answering your guys' questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.